My name is Bond. James Bond. From the first watch. To the last. And beyond. When you imagine yourself as an international spy. What kind of watch are you wearing? Here are some reasons you might have shown up here at this video. You are fascinated with the iconic James Bond watches. You are here to learn more about the watches of James Bond. Or, you're even more serious, you want to join this elite group of gentlemen and own a James Bond watch. Taking one step closer to becoming an international man of mystery. What's so special about the James Bond watch, anyway? You can only understand the answer if you learn the roles of each James Bond watch in every movie. Stay with me as I indulge your love for classic 007 watches with an exciting movie timeline of the first models and some interesting facts about these gadgets. James Bond movies have been around since the time of your great grandfather. Back in 1962, he appeared in his first movie called Dr. No. In this film, it was the Rolex Submariner 6538. His most current film, Spectre, he wears an Omega Seamaster Planet Ocean. Did these watches only appear as eye candy? Like so many of the Bond girls. Or was it essential for the scene? Keep watching and find out. You'll learn how every era perceives the ideal James Bond watch. Afterward, you'll see which watch perfectly fits your personality and lifestyle with my super simple buying guide. The Rolex Submariner 6538 with its black leather strap. It was the perfect match for the first James Bond movie. It had the best of both worlds as a luxurious yet rugged sports watch. Who wore it? Sean Connery from 1963 to 1965. When did it appear? The Rolex Submariner 6538 appeared in the first James Bond film, Dr. No, in 1962, From Russia with Love, in 1963, Goldfinger, in 1964, and Thunderball, in 1965. Why was it chosen? It emulated what Bond really was. Elegant but tough. The Brittling Top Time 2002 is a very beautiful watch. In the movie, it has an additional stainless steel surround to enhance its looks and durability. It even has a chronograph dial and a tachometer. The Brittling Top Time 2002. Who wore it? Sean Connery. When did it appear? It appeared in the 1965 installment, Thunderball. Where did it appear? You'll have a good view of the watch when Major Boothroyd fitted it for Bond. Why was it chosen? As the first gadget watch in the entire franchise, the Brittling Top Time 2002 was issued by the Q branch to help Agent 007 in more complicated scenarios. The Rolex Submariner 5513. Gasp. The Submariner again? Before you'd start concluding that the first James Bond watch was a hard thing to get over from, look at the reference number more closely. That's right, we're looking at their Rolex Submariner 5513, not 6538. How different was the Submariner 5513 from 6538? For starters, it had the iconic stainless steel oyster bracelet, and crown guards placed on the right side. What we can't see right now is the red triangle previously found on the 6538. Who wore it? George Lazenby and Roger Moore both wore this watch. When did it appear? It appeared in the 1969 007 film, On Her Majesty's Secret Service, and 1973's, Live and Let Die. Where did it appear? Thanks to Lazenby and Moore, the Submariner 5513 gained a longer exposure than other James Bond watches. Why was it chosen? There's no concrete reason for this. However, it was known that Lazenby had his own Submariner and wore it during his audition. If you want to learn more about all the watches of 007, the Rolex Predatoner 6238, the Omega Seamouse to 300 meters, even the Hamilton Pulsar P2 and more. 
please visit expensivewatchesformen.com. If you like this video, give it a like. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, it will encourage me to make more videos. If you think this video blows, and you're a little dumber for it, please let me know in the comments. Expensive watches for men .com.